G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back to my channel. So, 745 million in Bitcoin options will expire tomorrow. Now, what will that do to the price? Uh, previously, uh, it hasn't really done too much to the price uh, at all, but in saying that, interest has never been as high as it currently is at the moment uh, in Bitcoin options. So it'll be interesting to see, particularly when it's kind of happening on the weekend. Uh, I mean, not on the weekend, it's kind of on the Friday. And usually Bitcoin sells off a little bit over the weekend and cryptocurrencies in general. People take some profits for the weekend or whatever it is that they're doing. And we usually have a little bit of a retracement or a pullback. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. But what I found really interesting was just down here. The open interest for BTC options is currently at its highest recorded level. There is potential for some options related uh, moves around the expiry, but can't see any big bear move on the cards, uh, said Pelicans. Adding, the overall skew for BTC options is still heavily on the, on the side of upside interest. So again, most people are still expecting BTC to go up from here. Uh, and that's good news, but as I've said previously in some of my videos, I do get a little bit worried when people get a little bit too exuberant. Quite often, not always, but definitely quite often, uh, cryptocurrencies and BT in particular, which generally leads the way, it can do the opposite of what everyone's thinking and kind of wreck a few people, uh, particularly kind of the people who are going long and short. When everyone thinks it's going to go long, it'll go short and liquidate everybody. And when everybody's thinking it's going to go short, it'll go long uh, and liquidate them there as well. So yeah, interesting to wait and see what happens. But wow, 745 million. In options, that's quite a bit. Now, something else that I saw that uh, was really, really interesting is apparently Joe Rogan uh, has got on his uh, podcast and told over 200 million people, that's how many people listen to him, to buy Bitcoin. Now, I haven't had a chance to look at it properly. I did uh, look at a quick clip. He's kind of been on and off about Bitcoin for a while, and he's never kind of openly said that he really loved it, but he has says, said that he owns some. So I guess it'll be interesting to see. He likes the idea of it, for sure. He spoke about it. He likes the idea of, you know, kind of decentralization and banks not being in control and that, you know, the, the public, i.e. the people who own it, really are in control of it. So that's really interesting. Uh, and he is one of the bigger people on YouTube. He's, seen, he's soon sorry, leaving YouTube and he'll be heading to uh, Spotify or something like that. I, I can't remember. He signed a massive deal to go uh, move away from YouTube. Anyway, and that, that'll be sad. I, I enjoy watching his stuff on YouTube uh, when I have the time. But this could be something big. You know, he's got about 200 million listeners. You know, you just get a couple of those people jumping in to buy some Bitcoin. That could have a drastic effect on the price. So pretty interesting and well done, uh, Joe Rogan, for, you know, getting out there and uh, getting onto the crypto bandwagon a little bit. As I said, he's, he's sort of been on for a while, but just hasn't really kind of openly endorsed his overall love for it. But also this was uh, a paid advertisement that he was asked to do. And who was it? For the Cash App. Cash App were paying him to do it. And Joe Rogan, he won't advertise anything just simply because of money. That would hurt his brand. He still needs to believe in it as well. And so, as I said, he is a bit of a crypto uh, semi-fan and maybe, you know, he's starting to get more and more into it. Something else that was really, really interesting is old William Shatner. He's been all about crypto for a while. He's been a massive uh, proponent of it uh, and, you know, really getting out there and kind of spreading the word and things like that. But he had some non-fungible tokens uh, that were put on the WAX blockchain. So there's 125,000 of them. They sold out in nine minutes. In nine minutes, uh, I'm going to say there was a lot of Trekkie fans out there that basically got on it as well. But not all these uh, kind of trading, uh, you know, non-fungible trading token uh, cards were of him uh, playing his role in Star Trek. They were just different cards from different times of his life and things like that. But 125,000 of them sold out in nine minutes. So, you know, you can't say that this space isn't growing exponentially, but it does worry me a little bit. It reminds me of the crypto kitty sort of thing. Uh, obviously, you know, fees at the moment are on Ethereum. Are, they are ridiculous. There's no, no other way to put it. Hopefully some you know, some scaling solutions are going to come out quickly and start to adjust on that. And I know certain platforms are implementing their own sort of uh, 
scaling systems going already. So Synthetic Network is working on one, and I'm gonna do another video about them very, very shortly. Uh, and a couple other platforms, they're already introducing it themselves, not on the entire Ethereum network, but just on their own little platforms on the network. So fingers crossed that that all happens soon, and fingers crossed that we can get that uh, Ethereum 2.0 happening fairly soon. Word is that it is happening, which is really, really good. Now also, Bitcoin hodling at the moment, uh, it's on its way up. So the last time this statistic uh, in Bitcoin happened, BTC surged 3.5x. So we're sitting at around about $11,000 now, three times that. Well, takes us up to, you know, 33,000 and 0.5, let's say about 35, sort of $40,000. That will be interesting. But yeah, goes on here to basically say, there is a ton of people just hodling at the moment. Most people are buying and holding, and over the last 12 months, uh, most people, uh, the Bitcoin has just been sitting there. Nothing has really been happening uh, with the Bitcoin yet. It's just basically holding uh, in its wallets. Uh, some of them are sitting on the exchange, and on occasions, you know, you'll see uh, the metrics slightly change, particularly whale alert every now and then. You can see something from them on Twitter saying that a whole stack of, you know, BTC has been moved. But just because it's moving doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be sold. But uh, very, very interesting. Now, lastly, but not least, let's go and have a look at the market cap. So 331 billion, we're ever so slowly continuing to increase that market cap, 330 billion. Now we're still a long way off. You know, we're only a third of the way to where we were at the peak of 2017. We're around the 800, 900 billion dollar mark getting close to that trillion dollar mark. So, you know, people who are, you know, worried about whether things are overpriced at the moment, look, bad projects that aren't going to last, absolutely could be overpriced and possibly are overpriced. But the good projects, they're gonna be here and they're not just hype, they've got some real world uh, use and all the rest of it. They're not even close to reaching their top share. They're not even close. They are so far off, it's not funny. When Bitcoin hits, 20,000, everything else just gets dragged up along with it. It's just the way it is. Everything suddenly becomes worth a whole lot more. Now, it doesn't mean it'll stay that way, but we were at sort of 800, 900 uh, billion uh, in market cap when Bitcoin was sitting around 20,000. So it's still got a long, long way to go, and that is in turn going to drag up other coins. And most altcoins will do better than Bitcoin. I spoke about this the other day. Bitcoin is kind of the most stable of the cryptocurrencies outside of the uh, stable coins. They're obviously stable all the time. Things like Tether and that, they can have small spikes up and down, but they basically stay around a dollar. As Bitcoin gets older and older and older, it's becoming more and more stable. Now, don't get me wrong, we're still nowhere near it being you know, completely stable. Uh, as I said in another video, I think we're at least one halving to maybe two halvings away before Bitcoin really starts to kind of stabilize. I think it's gonna take more time than that to be really stable and you know, act like other stocks. I think there's still gonna be a fair amount of uh, volatility in Bitcoin for a while to come. So at least another cycle. So that's this cycle and the one after before it maybe stabilizes. But altcoins, they will remain are highly volatile for quite some time. So I think there'll still be plenty of money to be made there. But let's have a look uh, what kind of movers we've had. All right, Bancor, so did well. Uh, VeChain doing well, Chainlink, Aave. Band Protocol, still on a bit of a tear. It did have a bit of a retracement, but it's pulled back. Now, Synthetics Network, uh, as I said, I'm gonna do another video on Synthetics Network, and I'm gonna explain why I'm so bullish on Synthetics Network. And Ethereum, again, still keeps to just keep on creeping up, so 20% in the last seven days, 4% in 24 hours, and still creeping up now. So over, overall, things are looking really, really positive uh, in, in the market. And again, uh, sometimes there's definitely occasions, particularly as it's sort of coming into the Friday now, there's a chance that we might have a bit of a sell-off for the weekend, uh, and that can occur continuously over the weekend. But we had a weekend, I think it was only about a week or two ago, where it all went up over the weekend. So, you know, I'm by far no savant, no oracle, I don't know at all, but I just know generally the Fridays there's a bit of a sell-off, so we might see this fall down a bit. 
Anyway, that's it from me today. I hope you enjoy my content. Please hit that like button and subscribe if you think you, uh, I'm doing all right. Uh, leave any comments. I'd love to hear back from anyone who's watching my videos uh, and know their thoughts on, on anything that I cover. Or if there's something that you'd like me to cover and have a look at. Uh, you know, I might get some time and you know do some deep dives into some projects. Uh, I did a bit of a deep dive into synthetics. I'm going to do some more deep dives into other ones. But again, I have a job and I have a daughter and things like that. So there's times where I have a whole lot of time to put into my content. And there's times where I don't have a whole lot of time. And I don't like to like make my videos go on for too long either. But if I'm doing a deep dive, I'll probably you know aim for that kind of 10 to 15 sort of maybe 20 minute long videos. But generally I'm sort of sitting around the maybe 7 or 8 to 12 minutes. Just quick updates and things like that. I don't need to go on forever, which is exactly what I'm doing now. Anyway, stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that game train today, and I'll see you next time.